Hi, this is Eric Sloof and I'm at the Hands-On Labs and I'm joined by Chris Romano. Hi Chris, how are you doing? Fantastic Eric, how are you doing man? Nice. Having a good job? Nice to hear, I'm doing fine, thanks. So, what we see in the back right here are almost 400 people doing laps. Yes sir, absolutely. Right now I think we're about 329 currently, so it's been fluctuating. It's actually gone over 400 today. So there's about 40 separate labs, including seven partner labs that they can choose from, and it's based on either our products or our solutions uh, in a 90 minute lab encapsulated. So. Uh, each lab may have up to seven hours of content, but they'll sit down, take 90 minutes worth of lab, and at any point in time, they can hop to any certain module. So in the old days, the labs were very linear. They were an hour, and right. you had to go from start to finish. Now you can actually skip to a specific module on a specific feature in a product okay. if you want, so it's fantastic. Okay, okay great, so they can, they can jump to the most interesting part for them and then continue from that point on. And uh, how, how long does a, uh, an average lab take? How, what's your slot? So about 90 minutes. But like I said, we have labs that have seven hours of content. So they get the first 90 minutes, they can come back and pick it up at any module at any time. That's the beauty of the modularity of the labs this year. Let's talk about a few figures. There are almost how many virtual machines uh, uh, deployed today? So today alone, we deployed over 20,000 VMs. We have almost 70,000 VMs running since Sunday. So that's amazing. 70,000 yeah. VMs in total deployed, so you're yeah. nearing the 70,000. What's the goal? What, what, what do you hope to get? Tomorrow there's no solutions exchange. I think a lot of people will visit the hands-on labs. So I think 90,000 is probably a reasonable target. If we get another 20,000 in tomorrow, we'll hit 90,000. That'll be okay. good, good, good target. Cool. How is the, how is the, the, the you can do a lab uh, on your, bring your own device yeah. uh, uh, way, or you can sit uh, behind a monitor out here. How many people are uh, actually using the bring the, the own device option? So, so we have uh, 500 seats total, give or take, 350 of them are traditional, and then we allow about 150 BYOD. So somebody can come in with their laptop or a tablet even. People actually take these labs in their, on their iPad and sit down in a comfortable couch or a sort of like pseudo office environment and actually take their lab. It's pretty cool. So what I remember from previous years is that uh, there was an enormous amount of people and energy needed to get the labs up and running. And what I saw this year is that the labs were uh, starting to build right after the last VMworld and the project was all already uh, up and running. It was called Project Me, yes. and there were even some public invites to, do, uh, to give it a test spin. Is this all running in the cloud? Yes, it's all running in the cloud in two data centers in Wenatchee, Washington, and Las Vegas. Um, and so Curtis, when you talk to Curtis, he can talk to you about Project Knee and how it's all running. And Project Knee is the front end, and it's been really amazing this year because it's just been a very fluid, flawless implementation. It's just amazing. Okay, because it was already tested out and everybody loved it and the performance was good. Yeah. And so it, actually it is a browser and people log on and just choose their lab and everything works in the data center and the screen is just streamed to their, to their browser? Exactly. And one thing we, I wanted to mention earlier and I forgot, we actually have three mobile hotspots this year too, so people don't even have to come to the hands-on lab. We have 20 seats in Moscone North, Moscone West, and in the Marriott Marquis. So people can actually go take the labs hanging out in the, the lobby of the Marriott Marquis if they want, which is another additional thing. And yes, like you said, it's all streamed. Wirelessly, wired, however they want to do it. Okay, so this must be monitored because uh, you want to be sure that everything is up and running. Can you show me some, uh, uh, can you show me the NOC? The NOC is cool. You want to take a look at the NOC or are we going to go mobile? Right. All right, take a look over here. So let's walk over to the dashboard and I'm going to hand you over to Curtis Pope, who's one of the architects from Project Knee, and he'll go ahead and explain uh, what the underlying architecture and all the components are and show you, walk you through all the different dashboards. Right. Right. Many thanks, Chris. Right. See thanks, you. Eric. Bye. Hi, Curtis. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Thanks great, for coming. Great. Uh, so you are, you are one of the inventors of uh, Project Knee. Who is the other one? That's right. Uh, myself and Mike DiPetrillo. Uh, we founded the Project Knee uh, to fill a need with uh, primarily our PSO education and tech marketing teams. Okay, but bef before we are going to talk about Project Knee, first of all, what do we see here? Is this vCenter operations in full speed? Oh, we have uh, vCenter operations. We have log insight. We're also monitoring some of our extreme I/O and also um, our just our Project Knee environment as well. So what do you monitor with vCenter operations? Latency, CPU ready, ballooning, uh, the amount of desktops rolled out? What are the metrics that are really important for a hands-on lab? Well, in this room we have a very large amount of vApps and VMs that we provision. So uh, keeping a track of hotspots for CPU and memory usage, that's one of our biggest things. Also for the storage, making sure that we are getting uh, the response that people need to be able to take the lab. So those are the three things we primarily look at. Is it, uh, is it not especially difficult to monitor uh, uh, the labs because they are nested? ESXi is running on ESXi. 
It is, but it's still, when it comes down to the basics, you still have IOPS, you still have memory, and um, you know the fundamentals are still the same. So um, it's just at a much larger scale, and you have to take into consideration that if you have problems at the underlying level, that your nested environment's going to be even worse. Is that, is that beneficial, that you can use vCenter opera operations because you can create relationships, for instance? Absolutely, and at um, you know, vCenter operations with as much equipment and as many environments as there is here, uh, vCenter operations really allows us to see uh, where there's hot spots instantaneously. We can see just by looking at the dashboard, the colors change and, and know that we've got something that either we need to back off of or go take a look at. Cool. So you are also uh, let users bring their own device. If users are complaining about performance, it can be their own device. How do you cope with that problem? It could be. Uh, we do some things. Uh, we have speed test within our uh, application that allows us to test the latency and the bandwidth from the device itself. Um, our proctor staff are extremely well educated with um, how the environment works. They know how to get things refreshed and, and look and help diagnose those symptoms. And then worst case, we can bring them and have them sit down at a traditional station that we, we know what the response is going to be. Right. So about Project Knee, uh, I know that it's running uh, over a year, maybe longer, mm -hmm. in stealth mode uh, before that. Uh, it's a browser, it enables you to go into a lab environment, it will give you full access to a desktop, and you can do all the labs from home also. That's right, so Hands-On Labs Online had last year's VMworld content available throughout the year. It was in a beta invite only. Um, and then this VMworld content will be released um, for people to take labs from home uh, probably in the next month or so. So if you are in VMworld SND, you are allowed to take the labs at home after the VMworld is, uh, is over? That's right, so the learning doesn't stop when you leave VMworld. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a big fan of Project Neo, only the name in Dutch means nee, which means no, <laughs> that's a little odd, but besides that, it works really smooth. How do you do it? How do you, are you using a special protocol, or what's, what's the secret? Well, so the, the Project Knee environment is a, is a collection of uh, servers. There's a lot more to it than just the front end. Uh, you know, a lot of provisioning happens behind the scenes. Uh, we do things like pre-populate the, the labs to ensure that when attendee comes and, and tries to take that lab, they only have to wait generally about 15 to 20 seconds for that lab to be available to them. Then the experience itself within the browser, it's a very rich JavaScript based environment including a really cool component called WebMKS and that's the console that's inside the, um, that allows you to get into the virtual machine console. That's a browser agnostic um, console that allows you to get straight to the ESX virtual machine console. Um, you can do operating system installs, you can actually get a console of a virtual ESX server with that. So it's, it's a really powerful tool that allows you to, uh, where previously we had to, to deal with RDP and other protocols that worked with inside the operating system, we get the, the, the underlying level, so it's much cooler. So you're directly going to the VNC engine of the ESX host? Exactly, yeah, through, through WebSockets, which is uh, completely browser agnostic. There's nothing special that has to be installed. The browser just has to support uh, WebSockets. Cool, cool, great. So if people are not attending VMworld and want to have access to uh, the labs, is there going to be an opportunity to, to pay for it, for instance? Um, I don't think they'll have to pay for it, actually. I think they'll be released uh, free online through the VMware Hands-On Labs Online. Um, you can go to uh, vmware.com and there's links to HOL there, and they'll be able to um, sign up and, and get access that way. Thanks, Curtis. Thank you.